This morning's farm report is sponsored by LS Tractor. Start blue, stay blue. This year, make LS Tractor your all season workhorse. From spring applications using LS tillers, box blades, rotary cutters, and grapples, to winter applications utilizing LS snow blowers, blades, and brooms. With this lineup, there's no job you can't do with LS Tractors and implements. Learn more at lstractorusa.com or check out your local LS dealer. Well, good morning, folks. I'm glad to be here. Merry Christmas to you in advance. I'd like to start off this morning with an announcement of uh, what's called North Carolina Farm School or North Carolina Farm School Academy. And uh, this series of meetings that will be held in the two counties, Nash and Edgecombe, uh, is very diverse and comprehensive. It helps farmers of all experience levels. It's time to register for the 2024 Northeast North Carolina State Extension Farm School. The North Carolina Farm School is a strategic business planning program for aspiring, new, or transitioning farmers. Extension agents from five counties with seven areas of expertise will help participants learn business skills with specific training and tools to help you grow your farm, to help you expand it uh, and continue to uh, increase and uh, make your, your enterprise greater uh, with uh, these different uh, su suggestions. In addition, partici uh, pa participants will get one-on-one -on -one site visits with a North Carolina State University business specialist and your county agent to help you address your specific needs and goals. And finally, participants will receive ongoing mentoring based on their specific area of interest. The cost of the program is $300 per person or $550 for two people. The program is made up of eight classroom sessions and four field days. Classroom sessions will be held from 6 to 9 p.m. at the East, at the East, East Carolina Agricultural and Educational Center. Uh, this is over in Edgecombe County, just off of uh, 64 Highway. Uh, the address is 1175 Kingsboro Road. Uh, this uh, initial uh, overture will get underway on February 15, 2024. Other classes are scheduled on February 29th, March 14th, and March 28th, April the 11th and April 25th, and May 9th and uh, May 23rd. Field days will be held from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. March 7th, April 18th, May 16th, and May 20th. Meeting locations for the field days will vary. Lunch will be provided and a graduation will be held as part of the May 30th session. Uh, the Northeast instructional team includes these following extension agents. Spencer Thomas, Ag Agent in Horticulture from Edgecombe County. Sydney Jatale, Ag Agent uh, in Field Crops, Edgecombe County. Jennifer Coltrane, Ag Agent Livestock, uh, Nash, Edgecombe County. Beth Burchell, Ag Agent Livestock, Halifax County. Brandon Pike, Ag Agent Field Crops and Livestock in Halifax and Northampton County. Justin Burkhead, Ag Agent Horticulture, Halifax and Northampton County. Brittany Pendleton, Ag Agent Field Crops, Nash County. Colby Griffin, Ag Agent Horticulture, uh, Nash County, uh, Matt Stevens, Ag Agent, Horticulture, Pitt County, Andy Berlingham, Ag Agent, Livestock in Pitt County. So for more information on this North Carolina Farm School Academy, 
uh, interested parties can call their local extension office, either in Nashville or in Tarboro, either one, and they'll fix you up. We are heading quickly into uh, the celebration of the real day of Christmas, which is uh, a week away now, and I'd like to transition into uh, something more uh, reflective and sentimental and uh, dedicated to the season. This time of year, uh, I call it legends and stories are very prominent, and uh, they are endearing and they help uh, illustrate the season, and I'd like to share one. Uh, this is one that I wrote myself. I, I titled it The Legend of the Candy Cane. Uh, the idea of the candy cane legend has been around long before my, I, I involved myself, but uh, this special adaptation is from myself. Long ago in a land far away, in a village so humble and plain, the good Lord was found by the peasants of the town in the gift of a candy cane. Two villages rested side by side, high on a mountain top and down in a valley wide. The people on the mountain were doing just fine, but the people in the valley were having hard times. Soon it would be Christmas, the mountain folks knew. To their neighbors in the valley, they wanted to give a gift so true. But money was scarce, not much to be had. They couldn't agree on what would make the valley folks glad. Then a dear old man from the mountain clan came forward and offered this master plan. He spoke with authority. His voice was a welcome sound. He said, give candy canes to everybody in the little valley town. But the people exclaimed with a loud anxious cry, just how do candy canes and Christmas time apply? Jesus is the reason, said the old man. Please allow me to explain, then I'm sure you'll understand. When I see a candy cane, the old man said, it reminds me of a shepherd's staff and the sheep that he led. Jesus is our heavenly shepherd. He guides me and you. His voice brings peace and comfort to all who are faithful and true. The good Lord is our shepherd. In his care we are safe. Just like the sheep in the meadow, we follow him in truth and faith. Then turning the candy, he made this claim. See now how it forms a J, the first letter in Jesus' name. Now see these wide bright stripes of red. They represent the cross and the blood that Jesus shed. In meekness and humility, in low poor esteem, by his own blood we are cleansed and then we are redeemed. Notice now, if you will, how the stripes turn to white. They remind me that Jesus lived a totally sinless life. Yes, his life on earth was clean and pure, though he was tempted and tried, his faith was so sure. These stripes of white signify one purpose only, that God in heaven will never be lonely. And see now, the old man said, these narrow winding stripes of bright colored red, Jesus was whipped and beaten, then left forlorn by Roman soldiers who mocked him, then crowned him with thorns. All over his body, wounds and stripes were inflicted, Judas and Peter called him master, and then they contradicted. In disgrace, he was denied a final meal, but for the mercy of God, by his stripes, we are healed. What we could never bear alone for us, he bore. These red and white stripes represent the stripes of our Lord. The candy cane is made of peppermint and age-old spice. In the days of our Lord, it was used for sacrifice. Now when I take the cane and break it in two, it reminds me that Jesus died for me and for you. In sacred communion, we share his body and blood. Then the mountain folks all nodded, for it was then they understood. Jesus died so that we might live. He denied himself in order to give. Death on the cross was an act of love, ordained by God our Lord from above. So let's use this candy cane, the old man said, as our gift of love where hard times have tread. Jesus Christ was God's gift to all mankind. 
No greater gift in all the world will we ever find. If we want to spend eternity with our dear precious Lord, we have a standing invitation with free room and board. So that's why the candy cane is so dear to me. It reminds me of God and Jesus and what eternal life is meant to be. Then up on the mountaintop, all the people cheered. This will be our love gift year after year. And that's how it happened, so simple and plain. How the Lord blessed the village with a lovely candy cane. Uh, that is one of my sentiments of this time of year. There's another one I'd like to share now. I first heard this many years ago on a local radio station, Katy Country, uh, out of Tarboro. And the name of it was The Christmas Guest, and it was performed by Grandpa Jones. And that is a very endearing story as well. I'd like to share it. It happened one day near December's end. Two neighbors called on an old-time friend, and they found his shop so meager and lean, made gay with a thousand boughs of green. And Conrad was sitting with face a shine when suddenly he stopped as he stitched a twine. And he said, old friends, at dawn today, as the cock was crowing the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me and said, I am coming your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet astir, stir, strewing my shop with branches of fir. The table is spread and the kittle is shine, and over the rafters holly is twined. Now eagerly I wait for my Lord to appear. I listen closely so I can hear his step as he nears my humble place. Then I'll open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone, for this was the happiest day he had known. For long since his family had all passed away, and Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day. But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest that this Christmas would be the dearest and best. So he listened with only joy in his heart, and with every sound he would rise with a start and look for the Lord to be at his door, like the vision he'd seen a few hours before. So he went to his window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby beggar whose shoes were torn, and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But his heart was touched as he went to the door, and he said, Your feet must be frozen and sore. I have some shoes in my shop for you, and a coat that'll keep you warmer too. So with a grateful heart the man went away, but Conrad noticed the time of day and wondered what had made the Lord so late and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard another knock and he went to the door, but it was only a stranger once more. It was a bent old lady with a shawl of black with a bundle of kindling piled on her back. All she wanted was a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away. Let me rest for a while on Christmas day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at his table and sup. After she left, he was filled with dismay as he noticed the hours were slipping away and the Lord hadn't come as he said he would and Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. When out of the stillness, he heard a cry, please help me and tell me where am I? Once more, Conrad opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. Again, his heart was heavy and sad, but he knew he should make the little girl glad, so he called her in and wiped her tears and quieted all her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more, but he knew as he entered his own darkened door that the Lord wouldn't be coming today for the hours of Christmas had all passed away. So he went into his room and he knelt down to pray, Dear Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me when I wanted so much your face to see? When so soft in the silence a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor. Three times I came to your lowly door. I was the beggar with bruised cold feet. I was the woman you gave something to eat. 
and I was the child lost on the lonely street. Three times I knocked, three times I came in. Each time I found the true warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. I was honored to have been your Christmas guest. Have a nice Christmas. I look forward to being with you next week. God bless you, and I look forward to when we uh, get together once more.